Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see you all here, and I'm, I'm very humbled and honored to open this because I probably have the floor for other people that are much more involved in rabies than I am. Um, but I, I really thank you for being here and um, for uh, having accepted our invitation. Um, as, as we said in uh, Fundación Meru, we, we have been trying to continue uh, basically pulling together what we can uh, to keep the Merev alive. And uh, it, it took a lot of efforts from us to find uh, the, the, what it was required financially and in many other ways to bring all the members from the different countries. I'm very happy to see new faces as well, uh, from Palestine and from Egypt and from other countries being present in, in, in this edition of the Merev. Uh, the Merev started with eight countries and we have today about 15 or 16 countries. So it's, this, is, this is interesting, this is nice to see more, more, more countries being involved. Um, I'd like to say that um, the, uh, the uh, meeting, uh, as you will see by the agenda, was meant to be very programmatic, basically giving the MEREF uh, participants and countries uh, a, a basically a landscape of what is happening in terms of uh, all key stakeholders like WSHO, like OEA, like GARC, are doing and enabling you to, to get access to these resources and how to better harmonize the full process and, and get this huge umbrella of rabies uh, more streamlined and harmonized. And again, Fundación Merio will be always a uh, supporting actor in this process. We want to continue supporting uh, what we can uh, embedded in the global umbrella of rabies, which is very much led by WSO, OEA, and GARC. So this being said, I, I, um, I uh, would like to just give you because probably you have seen this presentation a number of times, and, and I, I just like to uh, give you a little bit of a background of who we are, Fundación Meru. So Fundación Meru is a, is a family foundation that was built in 1967. Actually, we are, this is our 50 year anniversary this year. And uh, we basically, our work is to strengthen local capacities to fight infections, diseases in vulnerable populations. Um, we evidently have a historical path with Charles Meru <laughs> and the Merriu's history. And uh, Fundación Merriu, in brief, as you see here, is actions in more than 30 countries, about 30 biological training centers uh, built or renovated, uh, 18 applied research units, uh, collaborative research programs, and I let you read through. But um, basically, we are really much embedded in a number of different projects around the globe and in uh, different actions. So this is our global sites. Uh, uh, as you could see, I will not go into the de details, but we are present in Africa, in Asia, uh, uh, less present in, in Latin America. We, we, we are building more in there. And we have two main offices, one in, in, in France, evidently, and one in the USA. Um, so we, uh, we, we focus on three and uh, four focuses principally. One is increasing access to diagnostics. And we do that in many different ways. So I'm not going to go into details, but this uh, map allows you to just basically quickly map the different uh, projects that we run around the globe in order to build capacity at the laboratory uh, and diagnosis, diagnostic component levels in order to get better access to diagnostics to the, to the communities and, and, and vulnerable populations especially. Um, then we enhance local applied research capabilities. This is done through, as you see through this timeline, we have built a number of laboratories in the different countries. There are BLS2 or BLS3 laboratories on research capacities and also laboratory analysis that allows the different con the countries and the, co the laboratories, again, are not belong to Fundación Merio. They are given to the institutional partners in the country. So most of them are basically half at the, la at the, at the end ownership by the Ministry of Health. And we, with them, we cooperate for improving diagnostics. Um, this is just to show our network of research. So we have a number of numerous research projects on, 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 on respiratory diseases, on uh, enteric diseases, and I would love to see a project coming in on rabies. Uh, I, I personally take, take charge of a number of projects on research uh, around the globe. I was actually just coming back from Becca, 
and Tripoli in, in, Beirut, in, in Lebanon this weekend, uh, with a, where we have a project with the Syrian population and refugees. Um, and then evidently promoting knowledge sharing and public health initiatives. So the MEDEF really falls into this, this uh, focus that we have uh, on building capacity at the public health level. Uh, and we have very numerous initiatives for influenza, for cholera, that we're working at Global Task Force for Cholera Control, and the MEREV, which uh, we are trying to support as best as we can, the different efforts for, from key stakeholders. So as you know, MEREV was built and uh, created actually in 2010. Um, Fundacion actually, MEREU took, um, let's say, charge of MEREV in 2015, and since then we were trying to kind of creating the momentum and keeping alive the network uh, as best possible. We have, a, um, again, with the GARG, WSHO, and OEA, uh, you know, bridging the different things that are coming from these key stakeholders to the members of MEREV. And uh, today, this is the participant countries of, of MEREV today. So we can see there is a huge geographical spread, uh, very different languages, and, and so it's, 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 it's it's becoming bigger and bigger in terms of who is, is here and who is participating at the MEREV. This is just to show a, a quick picture of our last meeting in 2015 and uh, a publication that came out of that meeting, which, uh, you know, from these uh, regions is, is not a lot of um, data uh, coming sometimes um, being published. And so for that also reason, I'm happy to, to come bring to the podium afterwards Dan Horton, who has worked a lot on, on data with the, in that region, in the geographical region. I want to point this out because this is coming from a PRP meeting from GARC. And I just wanted to point it out because it really is um, a flow chart where, where discussions were held on how uh, you basically, uh, the delivery platforms, which is MEREV, is settled. We are enablers. Uh, for the strategy, and the strategy is really carried out by 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 the country members and, and people at the bottom up approach, but are it must and also very much carried out by by the key leaders such as WHO, OEA, and, and GARC. So this this is somehow uh, showing how we we were organizing ourselves to to make this uh, spread of of, of the, the rabies eliminated by 2030. Uh, happen and what is the role of, of MEREV as a delivery platform. Um, last uh, and not least is just to say the actions of Fundacion Meriu in terms of mothers and children. Uh, so, you know, basically we have different actions that are basically focusing on helping uh, children and mothers and children in, in humanitarian crisis and situations of building schools, building healthcare uh, uh, centers, uh, building or filling ads for, for children that are obviously not uh, in, uh, uh, lost their parents during a humanitarian crisis. Uh, we, are, um, we are doing that in the Rohingya, um, Rohingya's um, refugee camp. We are intervening also uh, in different places where humanitarian crises are, are happening today. So this being said, I just uh, thank you very much for being with us. It's, it's, a, it's a true pleasure to see everybody's faces here, and I thank you for, for, for uh, allowing me to open this meeting. And uh, i just like to say that I'd like to uh, wish us all a very productive meeting and, and fruitful exchanges for the future. So this, uh, I'd like to bring uh, to the podium Lea. Lea Nuff from the W Show, who will also give us a, a welcome address. Thank you. Dear Valentina, thank you for the introduction. Dear participants, it is a pleasure to see so many countries here. So on behalf of the team leader uh, of the neglected zoonotic diseases, and the focal point for rabies in the WHO headquarters. Her name is Bernadette Abela Ridder. I would like to welcome you also to this meeting. And um, I will give a bit a more detailed presentation with updates on WHO guidance. But you should be all aware that there is collaborative efforts at the global level on the way. 
um, together with OIE, FAO and GARC. There is an ambitious plan that will engage countries towards the goal of zero human dog-mediated rabies cases by 2030. So it is very important now that we have the tools available to engage also you, the countries, in this very ambitious goal. And we believe it is feasible. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to the deliberations and the feedback during this meeting and to see how you, as countries, are putting an end to this vaccine-preventable disease. And uh, so to make sure that also the most vulnerable populations affected by this disease will no more fear, ha have fear for it, from it. Thank you very much. Gregorio Torres uh, from the OEA to give a welcome. Thank you, Gregorio. Thank you, Valentina. Thank you, dear, dear colleagues, dear friends. Um, it is an honor for me to provide you with uh, some welcome remarks on behalf of the World Organization for Animal Health. As you know, the motto of the UI is protecting animals to preserve our future. The fate against rabies clearly match the mandate given by our member countries. Since the creation of the UI in 1924, rabies has been always a priority. Rabies was included in the first list of, uh, of notifiable disease. And rabies standards were also one of the first to be agreed at international level and to be included in the terrestrial code and terrestrial manual. The UAE believes that rabies elimination, as well as many other animal diseases, require intersectoral collaboration and regional coordination approach. For this reason, we have organized and co-organized numerous regional meetings and global conferences to exchange scientific <coughs> information to share the best practices and to promote the fight against rabies at animal source. The last rabies conference that was organized in December 2015, during that meeting, the international community, we agree that rabies elimination is feasible with the current tools. And also, we all agree that can be doable by 2030. Despite our efforts, and commitments, rabies still kills a person every nine minutes. And this is a reality that we should keep in mind every day. This is the reason why we are all here and should be also the main driver for our daily efforts. As a public health professional, we cannot afford a single death due to a disease that, as we know, is 100% preventable. The 181 member countries of the UAE have requested to make rabies elimination a reality. In 2016, during the General Assembly of the UAE, we adopted a resolution asking to work closely with our international partner and also to harmonize action at regional level to achieve the 2030 goal. Some progress has been made, however, we know there is still a lot to be done before 2030. We strongly believe that if we make the most of the current tools, we are responsible for our dogs. We vaccinate them. We educate our people. And also we, we provide appropriate treatment to dog bike victims. The zero by 30 is doable. Is it clear that rabies elimination requires a collective effort? We all play a role. It would be our responsibility as a health professional to identify where we can contribute the most, but also to work closely with our colleagues following the One Health model to ensure that nobody dies because rabies. Today we have the tools. We have the political commitment at international level, 
And we also have a United Global Strategic Plan to support you in your effort to eliminate rabies in your country. Finally, I would like to thank Fundación Merio for bringing us together today, for your continuous contribution toward rabies elimination, and of course, for your effort to maintain this network alive. I am certain that thanks to the outcome of this meeting, rabies elimination in the region will be a little bit closer. I wish all of you a fruitful meeting and really looking forward for the discussion during the next two days. Thank you very much. So happy. Uh, thank you so much, Gregorio, for a very, very nice speech. I'd like to bring Winel. I don't know if he needs an uh, introduction, but from the Global Alliance of Rabies Control. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you very much for the for that introduction, Valentina, and, and dear colleagues. Um, on behalf of the Global Alliance, just a few words. Um, so the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, or GARC, uh, is, a, is a leading non-profit uh, that's purely focused on, on rabies. Now, you, we can say that there are many, many important um, diseases. So why would we focus on this very sp specific disease? And my colleagues, um, already referred to that, and you know the answer. It is an atrocious disease. It's an, it's an old disease. It has a significant uh, burden that we have shown, and it is fully preventable, so a completely unnecessary disease, and it can be eliminated. And this has been shown in many parts of the world. So, in fact, uh, I would say that rabies may be the first ever zoonosis. <laughs> we managed to eliminate be the first zoonosis after the first human disease, which was smallpox, after the first animal disease, which was rinderpest. And uh, colleagues, those are historic, um, those two successes have become distant memories. The world needs um, something similar. And I think if we can, if we can manage to eliminate a, a zoonotic disease, it would be an incredible, uh, credible hallmark. So there is a global framework to eliminate canine-mediated human rabies by 2030. My colleagues refer to that. I would, I would argue that regional approaches are key, and of course that includes this region that was brought together here uh, for this uh, critical meeting. And clearly, we have to look each other in the eye and say to reach the 2030 goal, we need to do better. It's a significant goal. We need to do different. We need to be doing different from what we've been doing to date. Uh, from the animal side, I thought I'd share something with you which I, which I found very interesting. And this is a perspective uh, from a rabies meeting in Namibia. It was held two weeks ago. Uh, and it was focused on the 15 countries um, of the Southern African Development community. It's called SADC. So it's 15 countries in Southern Africa. And so when the meeting declared that uh, rabies should be prioritized, the chief veterinary officer of Namibia objected. Uh, <coughs> and he said, uh, and he, he, he argued as follows. He said, uh, wh what does it mean if we say we need to prioritize rabies? What does it mean? Over what should I prioritize it? And, I mean, this is, a, this is a good point. CVOs are concerned, and you are concerned with many important diseases, including viral diseases such as foot-to-mouth disease virus, PPR, 
blue tongue virus, lumpy skin disease, uh, and so forth. So instead, he argued that it is the vague notion th that rabies should be prioritized, which um, may actually contribute to our collective failure. And what he said, suggested, he said, well, rabies, instead of just saying we should prioritize rabies, he said it should be elevated to the same level as the other transboundary animal diseases into which huge amounts of money are, are, are spent. And, and he argued that this would be more rational and practical from the perspective of, of the animal health um, sectors of government. And then, of course, uh, effective surveillance and diagnosis. We, we need to continue to build the case for rabies surveillance and, and the cost of the disease. So, um, we all agree, uh, dog vaccination um, is, the, is, is the approach to prevent human rabies and indeed to eliminate the disease, so we all agreed on that. But on the human side, it is also important to prevent deaths by timely post-exposure prophylaxis. So this requires education of com not just communities, yes, communities, but also, as you would know, professionals, um, as well as awareness and, and the availability of biologics. At least vaccine, but uh, preferably also uh, immune globulin. Now, let me put it this way. It's well accepted that rabies control is a public good. We say that. Uh, speakers prior to me said the same thing. It's a, it is a, it's a public good. Every failure is a tragedy. We say that. But it is also somebody's responsibility. Now, from my own country, uh, there's been a very recent documentary and a, a huge public outcry uh, about um, the increase in human rabies and the failure to see rabies elimination programs through, such as the case of, of KwaZulu-Natal um, in South Africa. And this is an argument in the public domain. If a government, such as in my country, can assist the public to sue companies or the the private sector or industry, in other words, take legal action, in our case for a disease such as listeriosis, on the legal basis that it is preventable, then it can also be reasoned that governments are legally responsible for rabies deaths, given its preventability on the human side and failure to apply the law regarding dog vaccination uh, on, the, on the animal side. So, uh, Valentina, I don't necessarily advocate for, for the stick over the carrot approach, but again, uh, it, we clearly need to think differently if we are going to have any hope of reaching the 2030 target for the elimination of canine-mediated um, human rabies. We need to think differently, we need to do differently. Um, so therefore, I'd like to sincerely thank uh, Fodacio Merio and Valentina Pico and your team um, for your tireless work, for your efficiency in bringing us all together for this um, very purpose. And I wish you all uh, a progressive and a productive meeting. Thank you very much.